Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Binding of Isaac Adrith Plus. We lost the last run, but we went out on our own terms, right, Tomo? Where's Ruka? He's, he, he, that cat's up to no good right now, I guarantee it. 7FYXV8RR. Really just cursed with the uh, rate of fire lately, but at least our damage is high enough to compensate. Now, Kamikaze, bit of a scary choice. Let's be realistic. Black Candle, great start. HP, real positive situation. <laughs> I don't know if I should have gone for that, but with zero bombs, you know, getting small rock early seemed pretty appropriate. Um, there's no doubt about it. You know, I don't, I don't really mind saying it. I've been playing relatively bad on Isaac. Um, I think we just we we need to make a decision. You know. Are we going for the full-on, you know, Zane plays, always going for the re-roll, and recognizing that a lot of the time it could lead to the situation we found ourselves presented with in the last episode, uh, where we take a, an, an obvious win and turn it into an unnecessary loss? And I, I really think the answer to that question... Yo, check this. Genius. Uh, I really think the answer to that question pretty much wholly depends on... Uh, Five spirit hearts? Oh my god. Uh, what you want to see, you know? I think, w here's my hunch for what people want to see. Competent gameplay, good commentary. I don't think people are here, you know, I'm going to use Tetris 99 as an analogy. There's people you watch play Tetris 99 because of their unbelievable skill at the game. And then there's people you watch play Tetris 99 uh, for two reasons. One is, they keep the conversational lubricant flowing thus making great background noise and two every win that they get is a triumph of the human spirit and it indeed i think imbues us with a little bit of faith in what we too could accomplish if we put our mind to it i definitely consider myself part of the latter mostly because i'm not good enough to be part of the former uh okay no keys stinks pretty bad let me hydrate here but you know we, we're leaving that floor somehow with uh more spirit arts, yo, that was dangerous, uh, than we started with. And I'm also, I'll never, uh, like, seem woe is me overtaking uh, Guillotine. There's danger associated with Guillotine, but dude, one damage up early, that's huge. That's enormous. Huge might be a little bit of an, an overstatement. <laughs> oh, be careful. Um... And we're at 7 damage already. Rate of Fire obviously leaves a little bit to be desired, but, you know, 7 damage is, is awesome. Okay, there's our key. Let's go pick that up. We're going to get a deal with the Devil. I actually think Explosivo is fine. Uh, it will probably lead to us taking a little bit of damage, but that's okay. Anyway, how we doing? Doing well, dude. I don't know what, what kind of topics or conversation you want to get into here. You want to start with the day of the week? There's no reason to get into the days of the week conversation in every single video, but it helps ground you, I guess, and you, you know where I'm coming from. Wednesday, Thursday are super busy days in particular, because, you know, I do a lot of videos uh, on those days, and then also the NLSS, and then more videos after the NLSS, and then on Thursday after the NLSS, I do a co-op stream with my wife, where we've been playing EDF5 for, honestly, what feels to have been, like, three or four years at this point. Um... It's a Wednesday today, so we're, we're right in the busy corridor. And truth be told, I like the busy corridor. The busy corridor is what makes the weeks go by quickly. And I don't mean like I'm, I'm whiling away the time waiting for, you know, my life to end. I just mean like, you know, when things are moving fast, it's, it, you, you know the expression, time flies when you're having fun. I like being busy, as long as it's, uh, you know, busy doing stuff that is relatively stress-free. Which, you know, is a luxury in the first place. But, ah! Um... Never mind, I'm super stressed out. We almost got hit by an enemy in Isaac. If you have not played EDF, I understand. You know, most of the people watching this are probably going to be predominantly PC gamers. Let me start by arguing the negative, as I often do. I will be so happy to finish EDF 5 because it's, it's too long. But it's like... Uh, I mean, we really have been playing it since, I think, December, which is outrageous, right? Dude, this is a pretty good empty vessel, all things considered. I like what we got going on here quite a lot. Um, 
What I was gonna say is that, you know, we've been playing it once a week for three hours or more since December. It's crazy talk. The game never ends. We're... Oh, you idiot. We're 10% of the way through. Now, 10% is almost entirely through the entire campaign on normal mode, uh, just because of the sheer amount of content in the game. But still, you know, we probably got like three or four streams left. That being said, I've had a great time playing EDF. If you like grindy, like loot-based games, you owe it to yourself to give EDF a try. I understand is uh, EDF 5 is console only. In fact, it's PS4 only, but I had looked on EDF, Earth Defense Force, as if it was one of those franchises, and there's a lot, you know? Like, I, I think, and I hope I'm not in the, in the minority here. Again, I'm just going to quiet down a little bit, try to preserve the voice. Maybe walk into that red poop another 10 or 12 times over the course of this episode. Um, but, uh, the, you know, I think there's other games like this that people can relate to. Like, uh, I just look at the name and the fact that they've released so many, and, and previously I had been under the impression that, like, oh, I haven't played any of the previous ones, so I'm going to be, like, way too out of touch to play the, the current ones. Wrong. Unnecessary. There are definitely, like, other franchises like that. Like, anything with Warhammer in its name, I think twice about playing it. Because I'm like, dude, I don't know if I have enough of those. I have a huge lore debt. I can't, uh... You can't just jump into a Warhammer game. I don't know anything about the Space Marines, or the Inquisitors, or the Martyrdoms, or the etc. and etc. I don't disrespect the Warhammer universe. I just don't, uh... I don't have any familiarity with it. There's just too many universes, right? To to pay attention to each one. Like, there's actually more cinematic and video game universes now than there are uh, multiverses. I, or universes in the multiverse, I should say. I didn't know this. I recently read about it on a Neil deGrasse Tyson blog. There's got to be other stuff like that. Another one is actually, like, racing games. Like, I've never played a dirt game. I had a, a pivotal moment in, uh, I guess it was like 2004. Dirt and Project Gotham Racing 2 came out in close proximity to one another. I said, I'm feeling like a racing game. Which one am I going to get? I ended up getting Project Gotham Racing 2. Now, Dirt has had a more enduring legacy. There's no question about that. They're still coming out with those games today. Bizarre Creations, um, they got purchased by Microsoft. And then... I, I will... I'm not an executive. And I, I genuinely, or uh, generally, I should say, I try to... I think that people are trying to do what's best most of the time. Sometimes it's what's best for the shareholders, I'll admit. But, you know, I, I don't think people are like, Hey, you know what I want to do today is a stupid decision. But what I will never understand is Microsoft buying Bizarre Creations and then making an incredibly savvy move, which was having them make a, a marquee game for Xbox Live Arcade, uh, Geometry Wars Retro Evolved. It's a beloved Xbox Live Arcade title. Anyone who played it, for the most part, has really positive memories of it. Um, and then they're like, all right, you know what you should work on next, Bizarre Creations? You know, people loved, to be fair, they did make other Project Gotham racing games, but, um, People loved your racing games. They were just over the moon about your racing games. Um, what we would like you to do now is make uh, James Bond. Make, make, make a tie-in. Daniel Craig just got announced as uh, the new James Bond. Maybe you should make a, a, a Daniel Craig James Bond 007 Bloodstone game. Why? That was the game that, I mean, I think they released some other stuff en route to their demise, but they were shuttered by Microsoft soon after. It's such a, a, a corporate meddling thing, right? Like, I, again, I don't want to pile on, because there is no more obvious take in the video gaming industry. I hate the guillotine. There's no more obvious take in the video game industry than, like, mm, DAE executives bad, but simultaneously, um, you know, it... It's a very common story, isn't it? Big, out-of-touch publisher purchases developer of beloved property and then forces them to make something that's super outside of their wheelhouse. And uh, it, when it's unsuccessful, they go, eh, you're fired. You know, it happened to, uh, well, really just a staggering amount of, of EA properties. Like, I, it's kind of a, a hot issue right now. 
and I recognize this. I'm not trying to, you know, double down on the controversy regarding Anthem, which I will have to I have to own up. I went to bad for Anthem pre-release and said, like, why is everybody so mad at Anthem? And then, you know, when it came out, I was like, oh, that's why. So I'll, I'll own that. Don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, hey, we purchased BioWare. Um, you know, everybody, they love those sprawling story-based RPGs you're doing. Here's what we're going to do. Um, looter Shooter. Mind you, Bioware, you know, this is kind of an unfair comparison because they did also make uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, which I will go to bat for. I played through the entire game, and I think that's like an 8 or 9 out of 10. I really like Dragon Age Inquisition. They made Mass Effect on Andromeda, which was... Uh, Reviled is probably not the right word, but not necessarily well liked and, and a bit of a PR storm upon release, but uh, I, I think the long tail of that game, at least from what I can glean from Twitter, aka the, my most trusted news source, people that played it tend to be relatively positive on it. It's just unfortunate uh, that as a result of the circumstances of its release and the, you know, bugged facial animations being so viral and shareable, all conversations about Mass Effect Andromeda now get filtered through uh, the lens of not it's good or it's bad, but it was done a disservice on release or this is a piece of garbage, you know? The the story has become the, uh, the way that the release happened instead of the quality of the game itself. And as, you know, really not many people's fault but their own, but still. Um, Anyway, where am I going with this? I don't know. I, back in the day, I picked PGR2. And I'm not salty about it. PGR2 is a fantastic game. Probably my most played original Xbox game. And I, I wish Bizarre Creations hadn't uh, been, been ripped from us so soon as a result of what I would perceive as corporate meddling. Simultaneously, more power to the people who cashed out and probably got paid. You know, you deserve a PGR2 classic game. Um... Anyway, you know where I'm getting at this. That's why I like oh, Dirt Rally 2.0. That's what I was going to talk about. That's why I've not picked up Dirt Rally 2.0 because I'm like, you know, I haven't played any of the other 15 Dirt games. So I have no idea. Maybe I'm missing out. Maybe, maybe I'm missing out on the lore implications of my co-driver on the Swedish stage. Probably not, but... I think everybody's got games like that. That's what I assumed about EDF. I assumed that it was like, I can't play EDF 5. I haven't played EDF 1 through 4 and then also 4.1 and 5.3 and the PSP versions. And the, you know, the joke being that they have a, it's, a, it's kind of an oddly named franchise. Don't hit me. But I'm going to be glad when that game's over. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I enjoy playing it. It's just the staggering amount of levels in it has... Uh, I mean, it, it, it's it's pretty remarkable. I mean, there's like 130 levels or something ridiculous. And all of them are the same. And I don't mean that in a negative way. That the, the you know, outset... You, they, you start to think that they're different. You know, some of them are like, kill all the aliens. And some of them are like, survive until all the aliens are dead. And you're like, okay. Now that I've thought about it for more than two seconds, that's exactly the same mission. Once the veil is pulled off. But it's one of those games you just gotta, you either love it or you hate it. Warts and all. You know? It's, it's kind of ugly. The gameplay is repetitive. It's overly long. And the tone is really the big selling point. It's B-movie, silly, kind of deliberately cheesy, etc., etc. In spite of all that, it's very fun to play. You can't make an argument. You know, if you, if you review games on the old school, like, game pro principle of, like, well, the graphics, I take 0 0.8 times graphics plus 0 0.25 times my gameplay score plus 0 0.1 times sound, play, you know, and that gives me a five-digit, uh composite rating of where I think this game should be out of 10, you know, and, uh, you know, if you review it like that, it would get like a five, but it, reviewing it on just pure enjoyment levels is up there. I noticed I didn't say 10. It's up there. Okay. 
What do I want to see out of this run? I want to see another deal with the devil so I can make up for the fact that I took a health upgrade. Taking away my ability to fly from myself was not a shrewd maneuver. But I am very stoked. Um, our HP is, is good. It's good enough to definitely, you know, consider that we got a good long-term chance of survival. Our DPS is very solid. And I got a bunch of cat fur in my nose. Oh, you know why? Because there's, there's two cats in here now. When did you get here, Ruka? Hello. Sorry, we were doing the, the Jackson Galaxy thing, where you look at the cat, and then you do you slow blink him. I learned that from the television program, The Cat Whisperer. Apparently, it's a feline sign of, uh, of uh, good attitude and affection. Probably all in my head. But I'm like, when I slow blink him, he slow blinks back, and I go, yeah, we're cool. Um, you know what? I will spend a bomb. And I got a bomb back. How do you like them apples? Anyway, I've been talking about it. I feel like February's been like, or February and January have been really good for games, dude. Apex Legends, Tetris 99, the Civ 6 expansion. Um, we played a bunch of new stuff on the NLSS recently. It's been a lot of fun. Intruder? Intruder is one of those games that's like... It's like an idea we would have come up with on the show, but actually executed, you know? It's like, when I think of games that have, like... There haven't been that many recently. But there, you ever have that game where you're just like, the idea for this game is so positive, like, it's so cool, I have to play it immediately? I'll give you an example, and then I'll talk a little bit about Intruder. One game that hit me like that in a huge way was Spy Party. I don't remember where I came across it. It was like an old... Probably like a Kotaku post or something like that in like 2009. I think I'd rather have Dice Shard, I guess. Um, and it, I was sold on the game from the concept instantly. You know, an asymmetrical multiplayer game. One person... It, it's basically people playing two different games simultaneously that, that link up to, to accomplish stuff. Or, or to compete, I guess. But like one person is uh, trying to accomplish some objectives at a party... As they're trying to accomplish the objectives, like, you know, purloin a letter or, you know, place a bug on the ambassador, you know, standard spy mission stuff, they, uh, uh, they're trying to blend in and not reveal to the people watching that they're not an AI-controlled player. They're basically trying to fail the Turing test. Um, meanwhile, somebody's watching, and their goal is to figure out who at the party is actually completing the missions, and there's, even before you get into the, the greater, like, you know, the positive design in Spy Party, which really, for my money, is, like, one of the most interestingly designed games of the last ten years. Um, if not, you know, ever. I don't know. Ten years seems kind of like an arbitrary number. It's not like I'm thinking, well, in 2009, something came out that pushed it out of my list. But prior to that, you know, no, it's not really like that. But, um, you know, I, it, the first time I heard about it, I was like, I got to play this. Like, I emailed uh, Chris Hecker, the developer, and was like, you know, how do I get in on this? We'll definitely take divorce papers here. Now, I haven't played as much Spy Party as I like, um, but it, it has held up. Yes. Uh, yes, but then I now have HP, but I still wanted it. Let's be real. Succubus is huge here. I'm going to give you my bone heart. Please, uh, please respond. Spun? Not quite. Worth it for the damage, but still. All right, we'll, we'll probably have a shot at boss rush, too. This is a pretty strong run now. Uh, another example uh, was a, a game that Jason Rohrer made. You might know him from... Uh, Probably his most famous game uh, recently is One Hour, One Life. That one went kind of pseudo-viral. Um, he's made a lot of games, yo. We gotta open this red chest now. Um, but it was a game, it was called Sleep is Death. And Jason Rohrer, he always makes... Not, very few of his games I actually end up enjoying on a, on a vi visceral, like, I'm having fun level. But every single game he makes, I go, that's a cool idea. And I, I, I hope that doesn't come across as insulting to him. Like, it's it's actually admiring. I think he makes cool stuff that is just not always my cup of tea. Um, but it's called Sleep is Death. And it's a it's a game 
where uh, it, it's almost like a weird little abstract of Dungeons and Dragons in the sense that it's a two-player game, uh, and one of you is like the storyteller, and the other person is the person the story is being told to. So the storyteller can like design environments and and place uh, objects and stuff like that. And you the way you interact is like you type to each other in the game. So it's almost like you're having a conversation. It's like an improv bit that both people agree on. I remember I bought uh, two copies. I bought one for me and I bought one for Mouth. And we never could uh, get it to work very well, to be honest. I mean, this is like, is almost 10 years ago, so it's, it's, it's quite a long time ago by, you know, indie game standards for sure. But it was just such a cool design for a game. I think Intruder is in that same boat, where you're like, it's a 5v5 game. Five people are spies and, and five people are like the guards trying to prevent the spies from getting into this uh, objective. And there's all sorts of cool gadgets and stuff like that, and the VoIP is neat. Anyway, uh, again, I think we prefer Dice Shard. Intruder seems cool. We played it on the NLSS. It's out. It's been out forever, apparently, for, for years, but it's finally out on Steam while still being in early access. There's a negative for some people. You know, I, I don't see it that way, but... I don't know. It depends. It, it's why I, I don't live my life, at least, especially when it comes to games... I guess I don't care about boss rush as much as I care about... Oh my god. How did we not get hit? Uh, as much as I care about the item room. Let's go back for it. Um, but what I was gonna say... Is... Uh, you know, if something's been in early access for five years, you gotta look at the context. I, I hate the idea that, like, I just don't play stuff in early access because I got burned by Daisy. you know? I mean... I don't want to alienate part of my audience, but that's your fault. <laughs> I mean, it's the developer's fault as well. But it's not the platform's fault, in my opinion, that you bought into a bad game. Uh, but you may disagree with this. Regardless. Um, you know, if something's been in early access for five years, you got to look at why. Has it been in early access for five years because it's abandoned? That's bad. Has it been in early access for five years because the developer... Uh, wants to set the expectation that it's not a finished product yet, but they release updates every week and, you know, is relatively well-liked so far, of which there are so many examples. I mean, how long did Factorio spend in early access? How long did RimWorld spend in early access, you know? You don't... Uh, another good example? Slay the Spire. You know, you don't have to buy games that are in early access, of course. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I, I think that if you, uh, if you don't... On principle, you, you just avoid all games in early access, you're kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. That's my two cents. I'm so good. People, you might, what do you lose by waiting? Well, I mean, you don't really lose anything, but like, you could literally apply that argument to everything, essentially, except like biological necessities. Well, okay, you know, a new game came out. Breath of the Wild, it got a 10 out of 10 from everybody. I'll, uh, maybe I'll just wait until uh, it's on the virtual console of the 19th. Uh, Iteration of the Nintendo Switch 22 years from now. I can buy it for five bucks. All you idiots picked it up for uh, 60 bucks when it came out. Had a wonderful experience. I I saved 55 dollars, got the same experience, and all I had to do was wait a decade. Why aren't you as smart as I am? You know. I just that you know it's a, it's an argument. Uh, you know. Let me see what this is. I would rather drop algae's out here and then re-roll uh, question bag. Dice. Yo, genius maneuver. Anyway, um, it's I don't, I don't like having arguments in principle. You know, I, I like having arguments in you know that are based in merit. What do you lose by buying into an early access game? Well, you know, you, the game might never be finished. Sure, don't buy stuff that looks sketchy as heck and is promising the next great open world MMO survival game. You know, you gotta, come on, it's 2019. If you've been on Steam for more than a year, you should be insulated to the idea that like, if you see a trailer and it starts with a dude punching a tree and it's in Steam early access and the developer has never made anything else before and they say it's coming out two days from now, you gotta, you gotta use your own noggin on that one, okay? You, I'm not saying you shouldn't be protected as a consumer. I'm saying on that one, you shouldn't need protection as a consumer. You're, the protection is built into your own cerebral cortex. But you may disagree. 
Um, 37% chance of a deal with the devil. Don't hit me, I'm Ryan. I really should have brought algae's in here instead. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I would love to become Guppy. We do have, uh, yo, we're so lucky. And we definitely should not have taken that, um, right off the bat. And we're not going to respawn as Dark Judas, but I figured if we're going to take one, we might as well take uh, both here. Because of the HP-related consequence. But uh, let's keep Algis. Head down to the next floor. It is, I'll admit though, there's some weirdness. That I'm like, hey, have you ever had a situation where a game sold you on it with its elevator pitch? And then ten seconds later, I'm like, uh, never buy a game based on its elevator pitch. Well, yes and no. It's not, again, I think it's kind of an argument in absolutes. With a round thing in your face, you get spawn. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is it's been a, it's been a good year for games so far. I think I've had a, I'm having a good time playing a lot of video games again. Um, you might be wondering, NL, was your how are you enjoying Trials? I, I'm glad you asked me. Um, I think Trials Rising is a good Trials game. However, and you, you know where I'm going with this if you've been following my content recently. I will say something went wrong in the boardroom or, or somewhere down the line. Because there's just a, like the, the motorcycle driving parts are fine to good in my opinion. You know, and, and that's why you play Trials. Everything else, and I'm not talking about the story. I'm essentially talking about the... I think I can go black room. Uh, I'm essentially talking about the the loot box and and bike and character customization stuff. It's just like I'm very wary, you know, of, of speaking in in such certainty about stuff like this. You know, I it, it's dangerous to be like nobody wants this, but does anybody really want that out of a trials game? I just want more motorcycle driving. I really feel like if there's anything that could be said about Trials Rising, is a decent Trials game held back by the number of things the game seems to want you to do that are not related to driving your motorbike. Still think it's good though, but I'll tell you, a little disappointing. I, I think it's got a 0% chance of making it into like my informal list of the top 20 games of 2019. That's unfortunate because I, I do enjoy Trials. Oh well. Excuse me. Let me out, please. Uh. I'm also stoked to see, and I don't know if I'll actually play it, but I'm stoked to see that Devil May Cry 5 has had such a good reception. Um, I, believe it or not, you know, it's a vestige of a different and a bygone era. I got sent a copy of DMC from Capcom in the mail for the Xbox 360. I know we're going way back. This is, your boy's been in the game for a long time now. You know, no longer the young pup on the bus. People go, what outlet do you work for? And I go, YouTube? Go, YouTube? I ain't never heard of that. You know, now people are like, are you media or influencer? And I'm like, please, my father was influencer. Um, anyway. I got sent a copy of DMC in the mail, and I reviewed it, uh, and I gave it a 3 out of 5. And I feel like I did that game a disservice. I And, you know, I I liked the idea of being one of those guys who hits all parts of the scale, you know? 3 out of 5 is not bad. It's good, but not great. Um, and I think looking back, I prob I have fonder memories of DMC than it being a 3 out of 5. Now, a lot of people were giving it 3s, dude. I was not the only person tossing those 3s out there. But I'm glad to see that the new one has come out. People seem to love it. Even if I won't play it myself, maybe I will at some point. I'm not much of a character action guy, but... So I think we want this and Black Rune everything else, even though the Dog Tooth is a damage upgrade. We really wanted Rate of Fire, I think. Because um, I feel like that's rectifying one of the one of the disservices that happened in this industry a few years ago, which was the lamb-based thing of DMC. 
Even if the new Dante was kind of whiny. And then, you know what the other one was? Like a month later, or around the same time, uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance came out, and people were like, eh, it's okay. I think I gave it another three. I beat that game twice. Um, I think, looking back, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance was also really cool. I wish I had given it a four. Because I think I would love to see more in that series. It's actually, it's a good year for for renaissances of those franchises. Because within the past 12 months, Hitman came, or Hitman 2, I should say, came out as well. And, and is awesome. You know, maybe my favorite game of, of last year. I haven't really given it that much thought, I suppose. But, um, extremely good game, in my opinion. And uh, that, you know, that March of 2013, also, like, we were April, maybe, uh, May uh, or November? <laughs> Sorry, it was November 2012, now that I think about it. Again, the old brain's getting scrambled. Um, uh, Hitman uh, Absolution came out. Now, that one was not as well-liked, and uh, what's weird is that I, I kind of think that one got a bad rap, too. I, I, I'm, I, the franchise is in a better place now than it was with Absolution, but I still do think Absolution gets a little bit less credit than it I would give it, but anyway. It's been a big 12 months for those games is all I'm saying. DMC's back. I guess Metal Gear Rising is uh, Revengeance is not back at all now that I think about it, so, you know, disregard that, but you know, I almost built a narrative and that's what counts. Yo, uh, 18 lives. Excuse me, guillotine. Probably don't walk into enemies right off the bat. Easy win. Dude, fun run, too. We, we made this one happen. Got pretty strong pretty early, and uh, the rest is history. Well, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, though, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.